I'm Peter Block here in New Orleans at ACC 2019. On my left is Mintu Tarakia uh, from Stanford, and <clears throat> he is the co-PI of the Apple trial. Now, the Apple trial has gotten a ton of buzz at ACC. Uh, you know, wear an Apple Watch and find out whether or not you have atrial fibrillation. Is that true or not true, Minto? Well, the goal of the study, which was not actually a comparator oh, trial, right. Right. was to determine whether an algorithm that was developed by Apple could um, actually identify atrial fibrillation. And so what we wanted to do is to create a pragmatically designed study where we can enroll a large number of participants, have all of our study procedures be virtual, and then really determine if the algorithm um, works by understanding who gets notified, how many of them get notified, what the performance characteristics are, and whether it's safe. Okay, so for somebody who doesn't wear an Apple Watch, how does it start? You get an Apple Watch. <clears throat> so the, the way this starts is that people um, can download, this, who, who are in the study, initially you start by downloading the Apple Heart Study app from the App Store of the phone. And from that, you uh, can go through all of the study procedures through that. That includes verification of eligibility, onboarding, consent, and enrollment. And so once you do that, the algorithm gets turned on on your watch. And so you needed to have those compatible uh, devices already. Okay. So you got to have the watch, and it essentially takes your pulse and finds out whether you have an irregular heartbeat. Tell me what the outcomes of your study were. Sure. So uh, it's actually quite different than the way we think of irregular pulse detection because it uses an opportunistic sample and keeps checking and rechecking. And if you have five out of six sequences that are irregular on the pulse, only then will it be flagged for notification. And so we found a couple interesting things. Out of over 419,000 people enrolled, the overall notification rate was quite low. The proportion notified was 0.5%, and the below 40 age group, it was 0.16%. Are you surprised at that? Not really. We think it's an important finding because it tells us that the notification burden that would be expected would, would not be high and as high as some might have anticipated. And Got so it. we think that speaks to the specificity of the algorithm. Okay. So with that low... Uh, positive or at least alert rate, let's call it that. Uh, where does it go from here? Well, so we also looked at the characteristics of the algorithm, and we looked to see what the positive predictive value would be go. across the board. And so what we found in the, in the design is that at the time that the watch would have met notification criteria, out of those, um, at that time, 84% actually had AFib on the simultaneous patch. And that's a very important number for clinicians like us to understand how to frame this. So where we go from here is really no different than when we are. This adds more contextual information to a clinician who might have a patient who comes in with a notification. They want to understand what was the context, circumstances, symptoms around the notification, but it fundamentally goes back to basics. Good history, physical exam, risk factors. Yeah, but look, move forward to 2025. Yeah. Uh, do you anticipate everyone's going to have some kind of a monitoring device that monitors everything except uh, who knows what? Uh, so what's going to happen with these kind of data? Is it going to be a situation where you say, you know, we need to screen first and then look? Or is this a screen, a look first and then screen? Well, so uh, right now, this is step one. We're, I think, in the first half of the first inning on how these technologies very broadly enter our world, both as consumers, patients, and as clinicians. And so we're gonna be seeing a lot of studies a lot of clinical trials, some of which have been announced, um, to, to better understand how these get positioned and fit. Okay, so a lot to learn still, we would agree on that. Absolutely. And uh, a lot more to come with more trials as we sort of winnow down how we get really man many more positive results from these various monitoring devices. Yeah, and so we think the first step is to establish what is the expected notification burden, identify the parameters of performance, and, and show actually one other important point is that exposure to the app was safe. We had no app-related significant adverse events. Fair enough, thanks Minto. You're welcome, thank you.